Hey, what's up everyone? Cody Brown here from the West Virginia Archives and History Library, brushing up on some of my prehistoric cultures reading. Because in today's edition of Mountain State History, that's exactly what we're doing. We're going back, way back, like 20,000 years back, to get into some of the earliest peoples here in present day West Virginia on today's edition of Mountain State History. Studying prehistoric cultures can be a tricky predicament because of the absence of written records. We have to rely on archaeological clues that were left behind and do our best to interpret their meaning. Archaeologists often find tools, shelters, weapons, pottery, and other interesting things that were used by ancient civilizations. This allows scientists and historians to learn more and study about people who lived thousands of years ago. No one knows for sure how the earliest peoples arrived in present-day West Virginia, although one of the most commonly accepted theories is the Beringia theory. Beringia is believed to have been a land bridge that connected the Siberian tundra to present-day Alaska that allowed humans to migrate to the Americas approximately 20,000 years ago. The land bridge, however, no longer exists today due to the rising sea levels following the last ice age. Dating prehistoric cultures can also be a tricky endeavor for archaeologists, but they do their best by examining the differences in soils at different depths or through more precise techniques such as carbon dating. Considering technology continues to improve as time moves on, archaeologists have been afforded the opportunity to develop new theories about how early humans migrated to the Americas through more accurate methods such as DNA testing. Due to the artifacts that have been discovered, archaeologists have divided prehistoric times in West Virginia into three time periods. One, Paleo. Two, the Archaic. And three, the Woodland Period. So first, let's dive into the Paleo Period. As you can imagine, the word Paleo means very old. Shocking, right? So, let's break down some of the characteristics of the Paleo Period. One, small families or nomadic peoples. Two, they hunted large game with the Clovis spear, such as mastodons, woolly mammoths, <clears throat> yeah, flint napping, uh, you know, the process which spears were made. Yeah, that might come up in history bowl or golden horseshoe. The knowledge we have of this period is very little, but what we do know can be attributed to archaeological discoveries, with a great deal of those findings occurring between Parkersburg and St. Mary's. Next, let's get into the Archaic period. Warmer weather around the globe at the conclusion of the last ice age 10,000 years ago saw humans forming societies to help each other hunt and forage for food. So let's take a look at some of the characteristics of this period. One, more complex weaponry and tools. Flint tools that allowed people to remove fur from animals for human consumption. Lengthened rocks used as hammers and finer pointed spears. Two, smaller game hunting such as deer and squirrel, and this allowed for more efficient hunting tactics. Three, the Archaic Indians were not as nomadic as the Paleo Indians. The Archaic Indians tended to build huts or take shelter in natural protection, such as caves. Next, let's get into the Woodland Period. Although our knowledge of the Paleo and Archaic Indians are limited, the earliest cultures we do have a great depth of knowledge about are the Adena and Hopewell cultures that existed during this time period. So, let's talk a little bit about these two cultures and discuss some of the characteristics of the Woodland Period and the commonalities that the Adena and Hopewell have. One, they were both highly organized societies. Two, they're both hunter-gatherers. Three, they're both mound builders. These mounds were used for burial purposes by the Adena and the Hopewell. The Grave Creek Mound located in Marshall County is the largest conical mound in the United States. This mound is believed to have been built somewhere between 250 and 150 BC. This massive mound is 69 feet high and 295 feet at its base. The second largest mound found in West Virginia, the Creel Mound, is located in South Charleston. It was built around the same time as the Grave Creek Mound. All right, so let's review everything we've gone over. One, studying prehistoric cultures can be a tricky predicament because of the absence of written records. We have to rely on archeological clues that were left behind and do our best to interpret them. Two, Beringia is believed to have been a land bridge that connected the Siberian tundra to present-day Alaska that allowed humans to migrate to the Americas approximately 20,000 years ago. Three, the three North American archaeological periods are the Paleo period, the Archaic period, and the Woodland period. Four, the Adena and Hopewell are the earliest cultures in present-day West Virginia that we have a great deal of information about. 
five. Grave Creek Mound, located in Marshall County, is the largest conical mound in the United States. The second largest mound in West Virginia, the Creel Mound, is located in South Charleston and was built around the same time. So, in summary, you may ask, Cody, why should I even care about people from thousands of years ago? They're all gone. Well, studying prehistoric cultures allows us to look at the history of human development, how we interact with each other, how we structure our societies, our belief systems, and the human consciousness all tell the story of our evolution as human beings. Thousands of years from now, archaeologists will look at us the same way. They're going to find our cars, cell phones, video games, our homes that have been lost for thousands of years and use their findings to add it to the story of the human race just as we have. I hope you all have learned something today about prehistoric cultures and the importance of learning about these long ago peoples. Until next time, for everyone here at Archives and History, I'm Cody Brown. Thanks for watching this edition of Mountain State History, Prehistoric Cultures. We'll see you next time.